The following program is being brought to you on the 7th Wave Network. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit 7thWaveNetwork.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Your power to choose is not a mystery. It is your divine right. If there was no one to judge you, would you make different choices? What about trusting your intuition and just going with what you feel? Everyone has the power to make intuitive choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creative you. Now, here are the hosts of The Mystic and the Mystery, intuitive guide and spiritual teacher Beth Poroshik, and intuitive coach and spiritual entrepreneur Christine McIver. Welcome to the Mystic in the Mystery. I'm your host for today's show, Christine McIver, and my co-host, Beth Perojic. She'll be returning next week with another lively conversation. And today it is Wednesday, February the 20th, 2013. Whether you are listening live or to the podcast, I'm sure that this will be an interesting show for you. I'm very excited to be welcoming in our guest, Kimber Wilkins. And today we're going to be discussing asking the universe questions. So it's, it's, it's a really juicy subject, and I'm so excited about it. And I'd just like to take a minute right now to, um, for all of you people out there who are on your spiritual path and look to many, many spiritual leaders, I'd just like to acknowledge the passing of Debbie Ford this week. Debbie was, oh, here I get emotional. She was a beautiful soul who was on a journey, and she touched many, many lives. And... Uh, We can just acknowledge her and take a moment to thank her for the journey that she was on and and all that she taught us. Oh, you can tell I'm a a little soft today, eh? (laughs) Anyways, I am an intuitive coach and spiritual entrepreneur, certified angel card reader, and an inspirational speaker. I coach and inspire individuals using many tools and modalities to help you follow your joy, unravel your fears, so you can soar towards your dreams. And if you'd like to know more about me, you can contact me at my website, inspiredchoices.ca, or on Facebook at Inspired Choices. So let's get into our topic for today because I have so many people participating on our Facebook page. It's been keeping me rocking all day. So ask answers from the Akasha, questions from the universe. So what is that all about today? We are going to be learning so much, asking questions of the universe and learning to suspend your logical mind while receiving answers on a new energetic level is what you can expect to learn during this highly interactive hour with Master Intuitive and Spiritual Mentor Kimber Wilkins. Learn how you too can begin to access more possibilities in your life to create your deepest desires. During this show, Kimber will give personal mini readings while teaching us to fire to follow higher and higher levels of healing and knowledge. Now, before I get Kimber in here, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Kimber and um, then we're going to bring her right in and we're going to get to it. Kimber Wilkins like many light workers, has enjoyed several careers prior to coming home as a master intuitive and spiritual mentor. On any given day, she pulls from a vast array of techniques and practices learned over years of study to offer unique and exciting interactive sessions. Kimber stretches her psychic muscles by continually learning and following her life path of being of service by teaching higher consciousness to all who are open to receiving. A self-proclaimed spiritual junkie, Kimber delights in working with your higher self via Akashic Records, angels, archangels, ascended masters, guides, and loved ones to see the big picture and guide you towards living joyfully. Are you prepared to be your most glorious self? 
Kimber's motto is clarity, direction, and balance, and she practices her unique style by counseling and teaching throughout the greater Toronto area and beyond. Welcome, Kimber. Hello, Christine. It's Hi. wonderful to be here. <laughs> we're, well, we're very excited to have you, and I know all of our listeners are listening in, and, and they're they're waiting to hear what this is all about and, and what you can teach us. So, Kimber, tell us a little bit. I, I kind of touched on your past, but tell us what brought you to becoming this spiritual guru that you are. Um, I guess that... My path has been a lifelong one. Like many people, uh, we are very intuitive when we're children. Sometimes we step aside from that. Life gets in the way. We embrace our humanness, and then we come back to it later in life. And that's definitely been um, my path. But to find that the more I'm in touch with myself, that the more happy I am. Hmm. Okay. So you've been on this journey for many years and you've been gathering lots of different knowledge and modalities from um, things that you've been attracted to. When was the real moment in your life when you knew that this was the journey you wanted to be on, the real spiritual path? I can't say that there was one particular moment. It was a series of aha moments where like, wow, I really get this. Um, this adds so much value to my life and to other people. So it's an ongoing thing. Okay, excellent. So what is the juiciest thing that you have going on right now um, in, in what you do in, at, out there in the world? Mm, I guess the juiciest thing for me at the moment is being able and blessed to be able to teach people the sum of what I've learned so far. I find that um with so much going on and people are very, very receptive to doing it for themselves. So you love, like what I'm getting is you love to teach this as opposed to just doing it. I'm sorry, I missed that last part. So you love to teach more than just doing it for them. I think that I like the variety in being able to pull from the different modalities and teach people what they seem to be interested in most. And I really, really enjoy working one-on-one or in groups with people. Perfect. So what is, uh, maybe go through a few of the uh, modalities that you use in your services for people. Well, Akashic Records is a very large part of that. Um, So all kinds of uh, psychic abilities come into play, whether any layer of um, information. I also call on numerology, uh, a lot of energy and psychology, past life regressions, Bach flower, um, knowledge about the body and the physiology. So I have a quite a big list and it really depends on who I'm working with. Wow. <laughs> that is a big list. I'm like, wait a minute, I can't write them down that fast. <laughs> Okay, so tell us about what makes the Akasha Records so, uh, and the Akasha. I know you've referred to, when we were talking earlier about the Akasha and the Akasha Records. Tell me about the two and how they're different and how they're connected. Um, They are connected, and the Akasha itself is how we are all connected. So it is our oneness. It's a record of all things that have ever happened, the current time, and outcomes based on choices so that is like a matrix or a web of information that expands and and grows and flows um, that we're all connected to now akashic records is your particular record in the hall if you think of the akashic records as a library or a database Mm -hmm. uh, your akashic records would be your book in the library or your page on the database oh okay so can we ever get our page erased (laughs) <laughs> like no. we erase our computers. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, good to know. So that they're there for our resources. Can we um, can we rewrite the pages in our book? To a certain extent, um, you rewrite them by your higher consciousness or your understanding, by the choices you make. Okay. So when you um, have a reading or contact your Akashic records directly, you get more clarity on um, direction and how to balance your life. Okay. So what are some of the things that you can do when you're giving someone a, a reading? 
um, I can advise them. Well, people ask, usually they're open to receiving in different areas. So they might ask about relationships or their career or their spiritual growth or their health. So it really is driven by the person, what, what they want to know. Okay. Excellent. So and there's nothing that's out of bounds as long as it has to do with them. It's not something that can be used to spy on other people or to change anything about okay. them. Okay. So it's not that it can be used for quote unquote evil, although I don't believe in that, but right? You no, can't, definitely, you can't. definitely not. Okay. It's, it's not. They're, they're, the Lords of Akashic Records are like the bouncers at the door. They don't allow anything that isn't in someone's highest interest. Okay. That's great. All right. So, um, if you would like to connect with Kimber, uh, you can go to Kimber, K-I-M-B-E-R, Wilkins, W-I-L-K-I-N-S, one word, dot com. That is her website. Or on Facebook, Kimber Wilkins Master Intuitive. And you can connect there with her and learn more about all the things that she's doing. And if you're listening live to the show, and you would love to have a mini reading done with Kimber using this amazing modality, please call in or jump over on our Facebook and post a question. We will need your full name and birth date, but we won't be making it public. And you could be one of our lucky six winners. So Kimber is actually giving away two distant readings and one in-person bars session. And she can explain more about what that is later. Not that you're going out to the bar with her. And I'm also going to be duplicating what she's doing. So I'm going to be doing two distant readings and one in-person bars as well for one of our lucky winners. So one of our six lucky winners will get that. So Kimber, how would how about we um, take our first caller on the line and oh okay, our caller has left. So I'm gonna give you a quick one that I've got. So um, I have Sophie is asking a question, and Sophie is asking, my question is after a rough year this this past year, I'm almost finished my course and I have had trouble in my years in education in the education world and this is my third attempt and I'm almost finished. What do you see will be it for me and and I know I could settle and find success and peace. So what she's looking for is success and peace and she's wanting to know if that's coming for her. So Sophie's numbers are thirty two five, Kimber. Oh, Sophie very much represents um, the year of 2012. So she has a lot of relief coming and I would encourage her to just relax and to follow things that make her happy. She's been so focused on the intellectual part. It's like her heart and her soul are a little starved for attention. So anytime she can get a few minutes or a few hours to nurture herself, it will really encourage and enhance her life and things will come to her a lot faster. So follow the joy. Yes, absolutely. Follow the joy. Always, always. Okay, excellent. So our next caller is Renata. And Renata says, my question, are there any energetic or karmic repercussions when working with the Akashic Records? Energetic, um, only in the positive and karma in the positive. Uh, because the Akashic Records uh, really are about accessing higher consciousness, they actually follow our dharma, which is our life path. So any interaction with it is only for your highest purpose and the highest purpose of all involved. Okay, perfect. We are rocking and rolling here, ladies. Sorry, I'm trying to juggle a few things because we've got so much activity, which is great. Awesome. <laughs> so we have our next question. Oh, hold on a second here. Uh, Nancy asks, I've been trying very hard to connect with my angels and my guides unsuccessfully to date what do they want me to know um nancy your angels and your guides want you to know that they are always connected to you and you may be expecting a little more of a a show or a flashiness um the messages always come in very small very quiet ways so that you really have to pay attention they are not um flashing lights and billboards, they are more like repeated messages. And 
I'm picking up that, Nancy, so you actually have a natural ability to communicate with the animals telepathically. So as long as you're open to receiving things, you will get them. Just look for small little clues. Hmm. Okay. So we have our next question, uh, Barbara, and she is asking, I have surgery booked in May, and I know I should be looking after myself better with regards to losing weight for it. Why am I not following through? Why am I procrastinating? And what am I procrastinating about? Um, I think that right now that you're worried about the outcome of it and not turning over um, the outcome and realizing that it is going to be absolutely perfect. This time where you're sort of set aside is a really great period for you to grow spiritually and know yourself better. I can't say that you are procrastinating. I think you're just waiting for the right timing. You have that flexibility. Um, you have a, a life path of um, 30 to 5. So you look to the past and the future, but you sort of waffle back and forth. So as long as you turn your mind to a positive outcome and really enjoying this break from uh, routine, you will just manifest and bring in great abundance in your life. So look at it, it and shift it a little bit so that this is a, a window of opportunity for you and that will help things come a lot easier. Wonderful. We have Jennifer on the line. Jennifer, are you there with us? Hello, hello. Hi, welcome, Jennifer. What is your question for Kimber? Well, I think there's a lot going on in my life right now, and um, I have a lot of really cool career avenues to take. Um, not entirely sure which one to take. Um, are, do you have anything to tell me about that? Um, yes, Jennifer, I see where you have a lot going on and it really is in harmony with your particular vibration. Um, you have a master number and you are a, a, a natural intuitive, uh, naturally psychic. So yes, I am. <laughs> I would, I would, so whichever one of those opportunities seems the most fun for you, I think that the fun is your key word, that, uh, that is definitely your clue to follow it's like your breadcrumb trail okay so well, that that's the great. one um, of all these opportunities which is the one that's going to allow you to play that's the one to choose okay does that mm-hmm. make sense to you oh that sounds wonderful thank you well i have some thinking to do <laughs> actually just let it come to you just ask what's possible and follow the signs and the breadcrumbs It'll become well, sure pretty ab- apparent to you within the next couple of days. Wonderful. Thank you. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Next <laughs> couple of days, you deliver fast, girl. It's not me. It's just uh, stepping aside. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. And I'm can just a messenger. Can anybody learn to do this, Kimber? Uh, for themselves, yes. Everyone is intuitive. Um, anyone can learn to access their own Akashic records. It's the matter of an initiation or an attunement and um, and practice. Yeah, it's available to everyone as long as you have an interest. Excellent. We have Cheryl on the line. Cheryl, what is your question for Kimber today? Hi, thank you for taking my call. Um, I've been a seeker all of my life, but kind of in and out of it. In the last couple of years, I've been more into it. Uh, I've had several jobs in my life, all very unfulfilling. And I know that I want to work with people a, uh, in a spiritual sense. However, um, I have not honed in on any spiritual skills, and I'm kind of wondering what direction I should go. Um, Cheryl, you have a huge, huge intelligence, and you're a lifelong learner. You're someone who can take an awful lot of very complicated information and naturally pass it on easily to other people. So you are a natural teacher. Just choose a subject. Choose a subject that you're enthusiastic about. Um, it can be a changeable thing, too. You aren't necessarily meant to step into one 
box. If anything, you're going to have a whole progression of, of learnings and passings on. Almost as the energy of the earth and people evolve, so does your interest. So whatever you're interested in, that's what you're going to be teaching. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your call, Cheryl. Thank you. Bye-bye. Kim. Kimber, we have Jackie submitted a call, a question rather online, and she said, I would like to hear what am I am needing to hear. What you are needing to hear is to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, there's so much going on in your mind right now, and it's just almost like a, a little hamster on a wheel. And just trust in the universe that you are perfectly being taken care of. Although you might seem like you're in a little bit of a holding pattern right now, things are on their way to you. Um, we always want things, and when we figure it out, we want to have it happen right away. Timing is never up to us. There are other cogs in the wheels that have to fit together for our best circumstances. And I would really encourage Jackie and everyone else listening to just start asking questions and not trying to figure them out through your own intellectual mind. So you're having questioning conversations with the universe and asking what else is possible. And even if you're having the best day of your life, still ask the universe, how does it get any better than this? And it, the universe will show you. You know, Kimber, uh, I met Kimber actually, um, I think it's only about three months ago now, Kimber. It seems like, we're, it seems like years. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't going, going to say way. that. <laughs> <laughs> we were introduced through a fellow um, friend, Angela Donnelly, and... Um, since I met Kimber and some of the things that she's been sharing with me and teaching me, because I'm a, a perpetual learner as well, I love to learn all new and exciting things, and she's been opening me up to this questioning the universe, and that's what this show is all about, is about really asking the question. So let's delve into that for just a little little uh, a bit here, Kimber. Why is there so much power in us asking questions of the universe? Because the universe has all the answers and it knows all the possibilities where we in our small human minds can't even fathom what the possibilities are. So when we request something in a certain color or size or style, we're limiting ourselves. When we just ask general questions, we put all of our angels and guides and everyone on the other side we give them free reign to create something that's even more magnificent and joyful than we could ever imagine because our choices are based on what we perceive to be available when choice choice trumps everything and sometimes we're not the best one to choose. Okay. It's so, sort of like looking at one page in the catalog instead of the whole catalog. Ah, uh, Okay. So what if I'm the, the person, and I know lots of people, when we all got turned on to the secret, which was such a blessing, it really opened a, a lot of us mm-hmm. up to the possibilities that are out there. When a lot of us got opened up to the secret, though, we started saying, well, this doesn't work, or it's not working fast enough, and all of that. What is it that generally, because everybody has a different thing going on, but generally, what is it that keeps us from seeing the results when we know the possibilities are there? What keeps us from seeing the results? Um, sometimes not receiving what we have asked for is an answer in itself. Sometimes it just takes longer for it to be created because there are so many other beings and things involved. Other times it's really not what's best for us. So it's sort of one of those unanswered, you know, thanking God for unanswered prayers things. Right. Is it? Can we also... Um, kind of be talking out two sides of our mouth in that we're saying this is what I want, this is what I want, but at the same time, even just internally in our mind, we're saying, yeah, but it's not coming. You know, all the yeah buts. Yes, absolutely. Um, quite often we're not aligned energetically or our uh, experience has led us to believe that we don't deserve it. So some energy work is uh, like the bars or any other energy modality uh, really helps get rid of those limiting beliefs. So th- these are techniques that are available to us to work on a, a faster s- 
time frame. Mm-hmm. So if we get rid of all of the, th- the questions in our mind and that little uh, person sitting on their shoulder saying, no, you can't, no, you can't, then it really brings things to us quicker. Okay, so why don't we, that's a good segue in, why don't we talk a little bit about the bars, because it's something that I've begun to do, and it's something you've introduced me to, and I just think it's fantastic. So what is this bars, and we're not talking about going out to the bar? Uh, The bars are 32 um, points on your head that uh, are accessed. It's almost if you compare your head or your belief or your being to a uh, computer, that you have all this stored information, and some of it's not necessarily in our highest good, and we've accepted judgments from other people. So what the BARS does, it's an energy process to uh, clear a lot of those limiting beliefs and open up space for things that are more in vibration with our true self. Hmm. Has that been your experience so far? Um, yes, it has been. I've, I've, uh, well, it was interesting because on a physical level, I, I, I'm feeling the energy moving through my body in different places. And then when I've asked, you know, what are you working on? Because I, you know, when you're lying there, so you're just like lying on a massage table when somebody's just touching the different points on your head. And uh, what are you working on? And as soon as they say what they, they're working on, I'm just cracking up because that's often been an area where I've been challenged or learning to work through or grow in and uh, it just makes sense it's like corresponding in the body um, which is quite interesting so it's it's also very interesting how each time you get this done the layers it's like pulling the you know the layers of an onion apart you just keep getting deeper and deeper in and sometimes it's it's heavy lifting but what I have found, even in the heavy lifting, especially at this time in the universe, is that it's going, we're moving through it. At least I am personally, and you can tell us if other people are experiencing this, Kimber, moving through it so much faster. So a challenge that would maybe take you six months or a year or longer, yeah, it's taking days. Literally, um, it's been my experience that one bar's energy session is worth three years of psychotherapy. Um, <laughs> I might also point out, Christine, that you are very much a body empath. So what you consider as heavy lifting, a lot of other people won't even be aware of because they won't get the physical triggers of areas. It'll just be gone. Um, we don't often notice an absence. So if we had a behavior or a reaction to a certain uh, a trigger, let's say another person or relationship triggers us um, and then it doesn't happen, we often don't even notice that till some time later when you think, oh my gosh, that button doesn't even work anymore. Mm-hmm. So that can be a very positive result for a lot of people very quickly. Well, that's, it's, it's nearly unbelievable because we haven't had that served up to us and yet we know everything is possible and it's happening. I can tell you it's happening for me and I'm so excited that I'm sharing this with my clients now and I'm seeing the results happening for them. So this is, this is very good. So I'm glad you introduced me to it, Kimber. Oh, absolutely. How does it get any better than this? <laughs> How does it get any better than this? I'm waiting. It's, it's getting better all the time. So if you would like to connect with Kimber, you can do, connect with her at KimberWilkins.com or Kimber Wilkins Master Intuitive on Facebook. We're going to go to a quick break. Before we go, though, my eye was just caught by my, my Louise Hay calendar. And it, this is what it says today. And it's very uh, lined with what we're doing, Kimber. I trust in life's divine, infinite wisdom. I am divinely protected and guided. And isn't that so true? We, we that really is totally, totally, totally applicable and not surprising <laughs> at all. No, not surprising at all. We really do believe in all these beautiful synchronicities. So please stay tuned. We will be right back with Kimber and we'll be taking more of your calls and questions. The Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Step into the doorway to conscious choice, greater health, and well-being. Attain the balance that you've been seeking. Tune in and turn on 1111 Talk Radio. Feed the mind. Embrace 
positively. Release the tension. Step out of fear. Host Simran Singh will help you broaden your mind and open your heart toward a greater understanding of how to take charge of your life. 1111 Talk Radio is here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time on 7th Wave Network. 1111 Talk Radio. Because shift happens. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? How do I get there? If you're searching for the answers to these and other spiritual questions, you can look within. And you can tune into The Open Door. Our program will expand your awareness of the teachings of the Ascended Masters, offer you practical tools that promote self-mastery and personal freedom, and provide an unerring pathway for graduating from Earth Schoolroom. The Open Door with host Tom Schumacher and Terry Kennedy is broadcast live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Being Here with Ariel and Shia Kane is an ordinary person's guide to modern-day enlightenment. This show is an exciting exploration which opens the door to living in the moment. Don't miss Being Here. Tune in every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern with Ariel and Shia Kane, right here on the 7th Wave Network. Be visionary. This is the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. This is The Mystic and the Mystery with Inspired Intuition hosts Beth Porosik and Christine McIver. To participate in the program today, please call toll-free in North America, 1-866-472-5795. That's 1-866-472-5795. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Beth at inspiredintuition.me or Christine at inspiredintuition.me. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. It's Christine, and today we're getting answers from the Akasha questions for the universe with Kimber Wilkins. And Kimber is an amazing person. She's a spiritual junkie. Kimber, what does it mean to be a spiritual junkie? <laughs> what it means to me is I have a incredible curiosity that I indulge about everything um, spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, it's a we good have, habit to have. <laughs> it is a good habit to have. It's uh, it's one that so many people are blessed with, and and when when we're blessed with that, and then we want to teach, it's it's a blessing all around. So that's excellent. So we are going to go right back to our callers. We've got so many people are asking questions, Kimber. So our next question is from Jane, and Jane says, "Sorry, hang on a second. Jane says, I wonder about my life's purpose. I know I'm on the path, but feel confused by so many options for trainings, healing modalities, mediumship. I lose track of where I should go. And then ego steps in. Ah, ego. The uh, ultimate distractor. Um, There is no one right answer of what you should Jane, you have an abundance of abundances. It's just part of who you are. Being the natural psychic, um, having a lot of lessons in your life about relationships, you also have some challenges with receiving money for modalities or practices that you do. So as long as you are... Um, not distracting yourself by taking more. Um, Spirit really wants you to apply some of the things you have already and be a gift to people in practicing them and not just learning more and more and more. I have to say that I have that in common with you and I used to distract myself by um, learning and not necessarily applying but in 2013, more than ever, we need to get out there and share our gifts and our strengths and talents with other people. So I think that rather than taking a lot more, that you should be using what you have already. Hmm. Very good. Excellent. We have Megan on the line. Megan, what is your question for Kimber? 
Oh, um, hi. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. What is your question? Okay. Megan um, applied for a, um, she was approached to be part of a reality show. And we'd like to no. know the outcome of it and how is that uh, going to affect her school. Now, you are asking for Megan? You are not Megan yourself? Yes. yes. Okay. That's why I'm getting a little bit of confusion here. Okay. Uh, because the caller's energy is sort of a little bit interfering. Um, mm. Is Megan's, is it Megan's birth date that you gave yes. us? Yes. Okay. Yes. So is that something that you can do? Can you read for someone else, yes. through someone else? Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure that I'm not um, tuning into the caller's uh, voice energy and I'm going straight to Megan's okay. energy. Um, this is definitely an opportunity for her, but it's not, um, it's a series of opportunities. So there's benefits from it. I can't say that she is going to be, um, totally a star after this, but there's some important lessons for her in this on her progression. Um, I understand that she's not expecting to become a star or something. She's just, um, you know what we're losing we're losing your call it's getting mushed up but thank you for your call today can you hear me yes hello Okay, Kimber, we're going to move on. Sometimes that mm-hmm. happens online. Um, we're actually going to Kim, and Kim is asking, I am looking for some clarification on my career path. I received nuggets last year for what I thought was a change back to a former career, as the one I am in now does not seem to offer year-to-year success, or security, rather, or stability. However, I have received more messages that I interpret as what I am doing now is still the right one for me. Is there any clarification you could read or interpret for me? So can you just give me a little synopsis of there? It's, it's sort of so she has one, for me. She has one career. Last year mm-hmm. she got notifications in some way that there was a, a change back to a former career, but lately she's been getting that it's, the current one she has she's looking for clarification on where she's to be with her career i get the information that kim is really meant to be an entrepreneur on her own and then she's meant to pick up a lot of the skills in previous jobs and create her own position um 2013 is a great gateway for her to start transitioning towards working on her own and especially relaying information Hmm. Okay. Kim, there you go. We have a question from Nancy, and Nancy asks, what are my greatest challenges and what resources should I seek to help me resolve these challenges? What is the root of these challenges and their lessons? Nancy's greatest challenge is self-doubt, and she shares that with a lot of us. Um, We have our little uh, hamster wheel going on with all the reasons why we shouldn't do things and why we should stay safe. Uh, What I would recommend is learning more and accepting more of herself, letting go of some judgments and whatever uh, practices or modalities that attract her to let go of judgment and to love yourself. That's always it's the biggest, biggest benefit we can always give ourselves by accepting ourselves for who we are, warts and all, and mm-hmm. seeing our strengths, which is a, a, a not an easy thing to do. But if you were to ask someone um, who you respect and that will be truthful with you, to say, please help me here, and could you write down a few things that you see in me and that you really um, admire in me? And it may seem sort of ego but it's not if we could see people if we could see ourselves the way other people see us um are we would have no problem with confidence so that's one thing i'd recommend for nancy to do Hmm. is to work on uh releasing her judgments about herself and self-doubt and then uh things just totally open up and the bars are good for that by the way wonderful 
Excellent. Okay, Nancy, there's a bars in your future, I'm sure. We have a question from Jennifer. And Jennifer says, I've always wondered if the souls we are drawn to in this life have affected us or been close to us in previous lifetimes. Quite often, um, our soul group incarnates with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, yes, there are a lot of familiar, familiar people from our past lives. Okay. So Is there a second layer to that? No, that was that was it. Um I'll just give you a second to grab a drink. We have um we have so much to learn about the what's available to us, where we've been, where we're going. I think it's important for all of our listeners to know that being in the now and taking the tools of our past but working in the now is the best that we can do for our journey for this lifetime. Uh, I know a lot of people do a lot of past life work. And while that can actually be a great piece of information, living in our past it doesn't serve our present. So I would encourage people to to really work to take whatever it is that was in our past, whether it was another lifetime or 20 or 40 years ago, and coming to the now and looking at what is brilliant that's going on for us now and what we are wanting to move through and actually doing that because let's make the most of what we, we are doing here in the now. We have uh, Anne Kathleen on the line. Are you there, Anne? Do you have a Hi. question for Kimber? Hello? Yes, hello. What is your question? Um, I'm um, wondering about um, what gift that I should bring to the fore. Which one of, of your gifts? You have quite a few of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so relationships are sometimes a challenge to you, and you also have the ability to see to the past and into the future, which gives you a little bit of the ability to waffle a bit. Um, what I would recommend for you and Kathleen is to take some of those experiences as um, lessons and not dwell on them and make different choices for yourself. That's really all you have to concentrate on is what would bring you joy and happiness uh, you've got a lot of inner gifts there just waiting for you to express them. Okay, Thank you, so Anne. Be in writing? Um, communication. I think that you're better, would be better served communicating one-on-one with people since relationships are one of the issues you've come to improve on in your life. So more um, direct communication and less on paper. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. You're uh, Kimber, we have Monica is asking, where am I going personally and professionally? Where is she going personally and professionally? Um, I think the key here for Monica is to keep balance within the personal and the professional. I'm sensing a little bit of... Uh, choice where one sort of overrides the other and then it goes back to the personal is more important and then the professional um, but staying in balance and not letting any one of them take over from the other okay balance is so important for all of us and then she needs to put some more time into nurturing herself um, I get that she's a very much of a caretaker and is getting a little depleted at this time. I might ask if she would watch her blood sugar uh, a little more carefully over the next uh, few days just to make sure she's eating on a regular basis. Um, I'm just picking up that she might be a little bit uh, depleted energetically. Excellent. We have Connie and Connie says, what do I need to to do to move forward in my life? Um, Connie, understand that you are a very, very emotional person and you really need to have um, some boundaries in there. Uh, you feel so, so much more than other people. Uh, you, uh, you're very, very intuitive and pleasing and you need to find out where your energy stops and where you're allowing other people's energy to uh, come into 
you and when you walk into a room, stop being and reading the room and really radiate your own peace and lovingness to everyone else and you'll see how you can change the room. So I think that boundaries and, um, and learning who you are doesn't have to be affected by everyone else is really a, a good place for you to start right now. Excellent. Wow. These are such great answers that you're giving people, Kim. I'm sure people are just sitting on the edge of their seat. We still have a few questions, so we might have to go a little quickly. We're running out of time as usual. So Paula asks, what is one important thing that the angels want me to know right now? Oh, that they're with you all the time. Um, you have a huge, huge angel presence. Uh, it's just like they're all crowded around behind you and walk in front of you. So it's uh, communication. Absolutely. Talk to them more. Talk to them more. Excellent. Yeah. Denise asks, will my professional and personal life become what I desire? If not, what are my obstacles? Uh, they definitely will become what you desire. Uh, you have a huge, huge kinetic energy and force around you, uh, Denise, that just keep on dreaming bigger. I think you're keeping yourself small because it's safe right now, but you have so much capacity and um, you have more opportunities coming to be a leader within your own business. More employees coming, more people um, looking up to you and don't shy away from it. It's a natural thing for who you are. Hmm. Wonderful. Enza asks an interesting question. She says, why didn't I have children in this lifetime? This was definitely an agreement that you made beforehand. Um, you have a very um, specific thing to leave behind. You're definitely a very earth-based person. Um, and being such a caring person, you're particular type of love uh, can be shared with so many more people than just your family if you would have chose to have children. I get that you are establishing or meant to establish some kind of foundation or charity and administer that. There's definitely a legacy you're going to believe, leave behind you in this lifetime. Hmm. That's very exciting. So we can make these agreements not to have children in our lifetimes? Oh, absolutely. Before we incarnate, we uh, have decided which of our challenges we're going to work on. And it's not necessarily just one. <laughs> there are minor challenges and, and major challenges. Um, now, you're laughing at this, but yes, we all have. It's not as if we figure it out and then we just get, no, get I, to play for the rest of our life. I, I, I'm sorry. I just got a visual that I said, just give me the whole platter. <laughs> <Give me> the <laughs> whole. I don't think that's unique to you. But yeah, uh, yes, there are agreements that we do that this lifetime we won't have children um, and just know that some people that were your children in past lives are in your soul group this time around. Hmm. And so are your cool. parents in different ways and uh, uh, different permutations and, and manipulations of our soul group. Yeah, it's really quite interesting. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, we have Emmanuel asks, I was wondering if you would know what's in store for my present journey. Hmm. A lot of greatness. Um, you're very... Uh, caring person you have a lot of mother mary energy very loving um if she's not involved with children right now it's animals and can sorry can you read that specific question again yes i was wondering if you would know what's in store for my present journey it's a time of choice there's a lot open to you right now and you will have lots of things to choose from. And you don't have to choose just one. You can actually work on several at a time. And I think that will get rid of um, some of the boredom that uh, you might have found where you have to stick to one thing. And the energy is available for you now to actually pursue about three different things and combine them. So a lot more um, busyness and happiness and activity, which I think suits Emanuela very well. Hmm. Wonderful. Judy asks, I would like to know when my two sons will finally solve their differences and my husband's health and our relationship. So she's got three part question in there. 
Um, it may seem that your sons are um, feuding or fighting or whatever, but this is an agreement they've come in with to actually encourage each other to be very individual and to stand in their own truths. So as soon as they decide that they will recognize that they don't have to be the same and stop competing at each other, then they stand in their own truths and shine as who they really are. They're different in temperament and um, not so much physically, but in temperament and choices, but they're very, very connected very connected. Um, your husband's health right now is a challenge where he needs to spend more attention on himself and, and to express his feelings more and stop uh, keeping them in. If there is someone he can talk to outside the family, I think that would be a great benefit for him. Um, rather than thinking that he has to be uh, the strong shoulders to carry the whole load um, it, I'm not sure if you have uh, a professional or some, a trusted uh, a friend around that will keep confidentiality, and I think that's really important to him. Okay. But he will be fine. He just needs to express himself more and not hold in those emotions because they are affecting him physically. Okay. So, um, Nancy or Kimber, before we go on, we have one more caller, um, and then we need to quickly pull all of our winners' names. So, Nancy, you have a question for Kimber. Yes. Um, thank you for taking my call. I um, am very interested in working in hospice, and I am wondering what I can do to um, make that happen quicker. Um. Have you ever considered approaching on a volunteer basis to begin with? You have natural energy and calmness that you just radiates from all of you. Just even your voice is so calming and reassuring. Just your presence being in a hospice or a palliative care situation is enough to bring comfort to other people. So volunteering... Um, might be an in for you. Okay. When, uh, I'm not sure if that's an option for you time wise, but I think if you just get in front of the people who are so harried and, and, uh, they're really overburdened, mm-hmm. just being in your presence is just going to say, Oh, I just really want this lady around. She is okay. such, such an earth angel and she makes me feel calm. So her presence will be really, really welcome. In our facility and with our with our staff as well as I guess I just the people who are in there that inside me I I think I need to learn how to to bring that no you don't dear <laughs> you just need to be yourself um, and that's what I was saying before is that we don't see ourselves the way other people see us but even your voice and your presence is so calming and reassuring and you just have this ability to make people know that it's going to be okay. That's wonderful. Thank you, Nancy, for your call. I'm sorry, we have to go. We're just about closing here. So Kimber is, again, KimberWilkins.com or Kimber Wilkins Master Intuitive on Facebook. Kimber offers all sorts of modalities from uh, Akashic readings to... um, uh, bars to life coaching. What else, Kimber? What am I missing? Hi, um, numerology, Bach flower, um, right. past life regressions. Just go to the website. <laughs> go, go to the website. Okay. <laughs> now we have six gifts to give away. So, Kimber, I'm going to ask you, uh, give me a, a number between one and 20. Three. Three, okay. Another number between one and twenty. Eight. Another. Fifteen. Another. Eighteen. Eighteen. Another. Twelve. <laughs> You're keeping me hopping here. Yes. <laughs> and seven. And seven. Excellent. So those three winners are Nancy, who was just on the call, Kimber, um, Kim 
Nancy, another Nancy, Paula, Emmanuel, and Cheryl. So Cher- Cheryl and Nancy, who was just on the line, please email me at Christine at Inspired Choices.ca for your, um, your gifts and I'll get you in touch with either Kimber or myself and then I will contact the rest of the individual winners. Congratulations on Facebook. So Kimber, do you have any last uh, words of wisdom that you would like to share with our listeners today? Mm, words of wisdom. Um, generally, dream big this year. Everything is possible. Don't cut yourself back in anything. It, what, if you think you can do five, then head for 50. Hmm. So, so dream big and, and allow yourself to be open to receive. I think that's another yeah. thing that I'm seeing a theme. Daydream daily. Day- it creates. Daydream daily. It creates. And another one that you say often is follow the joy. Follow and follow the energy. Mm-hmm. If it feels light, it's right. If it feels light, it's right. That's excellent. Well, thank you so much, Kimber. It was so wonderful having you on the show today. Tune in next week, everyone, where Beth is going to be interviewing a Law of Attraction Master Priya Ali, and you'll be able to uh, call in and ask questions at that time. And then the following week, I'll be on with Denise and Meadow Lynn, and we're going to be talking about their brand new Mystic Cookbook. So I'm very excited to have these two with us. 